everyone. It's uh, it's been a while, I think. How long has it been since our last upload at this point? <laughs> two <laughs> two weeks, really? Maybe. I'm not sure. Damn. Sorry, y'all. I was, you know, life happened. Life definitely by, happened. By, and, by life, I mean like crippling depression. So remember the uh, remember <laughs> the tangent about uh, about women that. Uh, that Aaron was talking about in the last playthrough. Yeah. Uh, you want to get into that? Oh, well, I mean, yeah, a breakup. A, a, a breakup of sorts has happened since then. Yeah. <laughs> See, when I said that, that was actually before the breakup. Now that I look back on it, since you just brought it up, it was kind of a premonition, I think. <laughs> because not but a few days after that, uh, my girlfriend and I broke up. And I, I know some of y'all out there have dealt with a breakup before, so y'all know how hard it is to get up from bed in the mornings for a while after that. Yeah, we kind of uh, we kind of took the uh, we kind of took that time to improve on ourselves, I suppose. <laughs> well, in a way, uh, I mean, I'm healed up some. Uh, I've been I've been on a few dates since. Well, one, just one actually. <laughs> it, it was uh, a Tinder. Tinder date, and it was incredibly fucking awkward. How awkward was it? <laughs> <laughs> well, she barely talked at all, and I was asking around everybody what I should do, like if I should go pick her up from her house or not, like like a gentleman does or whatever, and mm -hmm. then take her out. So I ended up deciding to do that, and I didn't want to. It was I totally regret that because that was two very long car rides of just pure, unfiltered awkwardness. It was it was one of the worst date experiences ever. Yeah. I don't think is it is it someone like completely new? Oh fuck! Huh? Was it someone completely new that uh, yeah. I never met before? Yeah, okay. some, a completely new pick from the Tinder Tinderverse. And I mean, with the Tinder, it's like it's a good thing, but you're gonna take your losses, like. I paid for dinner and everything. I just totally regret that. I wish I could have just been like, meet me there. We spent there like, listen, I'm not, I don't like you. So I think I'm just going to go now. <laughs> I wish it was that easy, you know? Oh, shit. I think, uh, I think it didn't save our upgrades from last week. <gasps> there it is. By the way, uh, Aaron's drinking a, uh, Aaron is currently in the process of drinking a Diet Coke, caffeine free, of course. He doesn't want to stay up all night. Right. That's why I chose caffeine free. But uh, you're gonna get a lot of burps this session. A the thing lot. about it is, like, I always end up burping at this time. I don't plan it. Like, it's not predetermined. It just happens. I don't know why. It's like the universe wanted us. Wanted me to be burpy on Guilt Face Gaming. It wanted us to be. <laughs> to get be gaseous. Yeah. But Gassy uh, Aaron 64. That that but yeah, that doesn't fit the right. That doesn't fit the uh, the rhythm of Arwing Aaron. There's too many uh, syllables. Yeah. Maybe too few syllables. Actually, it's the exact same number of syllables, it just doesn't ring well. Oh. Never mind then. <laughs> Anyways, uh, back to the breakup thing. One thing that I will have, no matter what you're going through, really, if y'all can, can, get in some good cries. Yeah. There, I broke down crying a few times so heavy. And you feel so good afterwards. And it's perfectly normal there's uh there's there's a stigma out there that saying you know you're a man you're not supposed oh, that, to you can only cry when your mother and your dog die that's so that's, that's for sociopaths you that's just, a sociopathic tendency right there yeah you just everybody got, needs some good cries men need to cry women need to cry if you bottle in up all them tears over the years by the time you're 40 you will definitely be like a Jeffrey Dahmer type situation. <laughs> or Donald Trump or some shit. Like, you will be a heartless cunt because you suppressed it for so long, you're you're you broke. You're broken. If you let it out, it's like it's like changing your oil. That's how I like to compare it. You gotta do it. Otherwise your engine will explode. Mm. So I had some good cries. Felt better. I See, I I just can't see. For some reason, I just can't find myself to like cry like 
whenever I need like something really like emotionally destructive needs to happen. It has to for be me like to cry. a ca- cataclysm. <laughs> Pretty much. Like for example, like the thought of my loved ones dying or something. Well, like sure, that. <laughs> that, that, that's gonna make anybody cry. But like, there's some stuff. that's like a breakup makes you cry. The overwhelming realization that life's completely lonely. It just kind of make, seeps in and makes me cry sometimes. But at the same time, it's like, if I'm really moved by a movie, I'm going to be crying. Like, I watch Fox and the Hound, and I cry. And there's plenty of other movies I cry, too. It doesn't always even have to be set sad. It could be beautiful, and I'm just moved to tears. I cry so easy. <laughs> but I like to. Like, I like to let it out because it feels good. It does not make you weak to cry, though, guys. Actually, I think at this point in our society, it's probably a strength to cry. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But Phil, you need to cry more. I, I'm, I'm trying to, but like, <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. I'd like to, but I, I promise you, it would do you a world of good. But it just—it takes something like extremely, like, like something really you're, just. You're too. You're too thick. That'll just beat me to the ground to get me to cry. See, that needs to be fixed. I think if you cried more, you would feel better generally. (laughs) You know how normally you're just like a husk? Pretty much. (laughs) (laughs) It would fill the husk with like a tamale or something. (laughs) A tamale? A tamale of tears? (laughs) Yeah, a tamale of tears. (laughs) Episode name. (laughs) Yeah. Yes, a tamale of tears. You know, that's how tamales. It sounds like are... a Mexican grunge band, <laughs> <laughs> or like a Mexican emo band or something. <laughs> tamale of tears, <laughs> but it would still have like the mariachi to it. <laughs> sound to it. No, mi tiembre, I don't even know what I said there. I'm not, I don't Probably just gibberish. That's not real Spanish, but I get what you were going for. Sadness seeping in, see. We were also lonely, see. <laughs> it's not a tamale of. That's brilliant. I think this is why we're getting our asses kicked. We just like kept kept relying on the uh, shotgun and the and the machine. Gun. I can wreak havoc on the shotgun. I just ran out of bullets. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Rock rocket launcher. Oh yeah, and we have the, uh, I forgot we had the, uh, double jump, too. I'm happy to report that I finally, after a long time, seen Split. Def- I feel like that might be M. Night Shyamalan's second best movie ever. I think it's his third best, but... What are his first two to you? It's, well, I'm, it's... I'm just gonna be- I'm just gonna go full plebeian and say The Sixth Sense and Unbreakable. Really? Yeah. My- my- my absolute best- My f- absolute favorite M. Night movie is Signs. My second is now split. Did you like Signs before or after uh, seeing Chris Stuckman's review? Oh, I, I loved it before. Okay. Like, I went through this period where, like, I thought about it just out of nowhere for some reason. And then I finally broke that, you know, I got it, Shit! On, got it on DVD and watched it. And it was just, like, there was always this weird, like, stigma. And so, there was always so many, like, jokes about it or, like, spoofs about it. And it finally, to the point, I got to where I'm, like, I was so curious that I watched it. And I fucking loved it so much. It's almost as like that was the point where like Shyamalan, where where the Shyamalan thing became a trope. What the t- the total twist? Like his whole his whole uh his whole directing style. Yeah, I man, he really honed to where it's it with re- that. To where it's really to where almost everything's really subdued. The yeah. camera uh, the camera movement uh, the camera movements like extremely fluid or static or. It's so it's so weird. To, so, or so kind of difficult to describe his style, and that's a good thing because it's so uniquely his own. Like he, you know, when you see an Ill Night movie, yeah. Except if it's one, I refuse to believe he had complete creative control over Airbender and After Earth because there was nothing Ill Night Shyamalan about those movies, except for like the except like the tropes gone. The tropes became too tropey because like. Everything like the acting was was too deadpan. Well, deadpan is kind of what he does, though. Yeah, but for the last uh, for the last Airbender movie, it was so the, the the show itself was extremely vibrant and uh, vibrant and fantastical. But that uh, the like M Night Shyamalan's directing just didn't fit it. 
Yeah. Plus, like all the uh, all the changes he made to the show and all the inconsistencies, like he was accused of whitewashing, but but it's it sort take... of like it's sort of true. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> I'm just gonna make that too. <laughs> Man, but like, uh, he made the Katara and Sokka white, who in the show were like based on Inuit, and and uh, which is weird that he would whitewash considering he's Indian or something. Yeah, and I wasn't fin he made everyone in the Fire Nation, uh, like Indian or Middle Eastern, and the Fire Nation in the show is based on Japan. Hmm. Well, at least there's a variety either which way. Yeah. Uh, people, it doesn't take much to be accused of whitewashing, but... Oh, no, just in America, too. Like, like I, I told you about this, but I don't think the audience knows it, but, like... Like, there's a there's a group complaining about, uh, about the new mummy. But, uh... Why? About, they they think that the, that the mummy was played by a white woman, but it's not. She's played by a French Algerian. Right. Uh, they just, they didn't like the, they didn't think the tone they, of her skin was dark enough or something. For, and that in of itself is pretty goddamn racist, don't no, you think? No, it's racist as shit. It's, now, whitewashing does exist. In oh, Hollywood, yeah, I'm not denying it at all. But like, people look for it at this point. Like, they try to create it out of nothing. Like, like they, they try to make it, you know, anything seem whitewashing. Like, the, with the case of, um... Ghost in the Shell with Scarlett Johansson playing it. Yeah. The, race never factored into it. I mean, she's a fucking robot. Like, in the in the anime, it didn't... It was never referenced, you know? Yeah, and the creator went on record saying, like, it, it's irrelevant. It is irrelevant. Yeah. People well, are not just... the... Well, the director of the original movie, and I don't think the, uh... The, uh, person who did the manga had any input on it or whatnot, but then they, uh... But then they went all to the uh, to like Japanese audiences, and they showed her like, and they asked their opinion on it. Let me guess. Let me let me guess. They're like, I don't really give a shit. Mo <laughs> uh, yeah, most of them didn't care, or, or they were excited to see the movie. And why wouldn't you be? You know, like Ghost in the Shell is like the movie is pretty popular overseas. Like it's like overall, it's made back its budget. I know but that I'm going to seem like a pleb, but I never saw the anime. Me neither, so... I need. I want to see it, though. I really feel like I need to at this like, point. Like, the show came on in Toonami, and other than the opening theme, which is like... I like, thought it was a movie, though. Oh, like, it's a whole bunch of things. Like, uh, first it became... It became uh, a ser It became a series of movies. <laughs> then it became, like, a... Like, an anime television show called Standalone Complex. And I think it's going uh, through another, like, anime renaissance. It's... It's it's pretty big in Japan. Well, well. to me, if J J the Japanese approve, I'm on board. <laughs> yeah, they're the only ones. I think it's just a white people thing. Yeah. Like they they like want to seem so cultured that they don't even know what the fuck culture means. Yeah. So that's my take on it. And one last thing uh. before we end the episode, like. An example of whitewashing, but is uh, was uh, Emma Stone from that movie Aloha. Apparently, she was yeah. supposed to be like part Chinese, part Hawaiian. I uh, I have an example of it too, and then we can end the episode. Yeah. Um, what was that movie that took place in Egypt that had Joel Edgerton in it? Uh, was it Exodus? Exodus. That was whitewashed as fuck. Yeah. Why was everybody white? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. They were supposed to be Egyptians. All right. Like Ben King, like Ben Kingsley was like only part is I think he's partly Indian I think, but then you have Christian Bale, Aaron Paul, Sigourney Weaver. Like what the shit sticks, uh, really? But that, that didn't affect, that's whitewashing. That didn't affect their careers at all. Like Ridley Scott went on to direct The Martian, and Emma Stone won an Oscar. So no, I didn't hurt their careers. I think that was just one of them like paycheck movies, probably. Pretty much. Well, on the next episode of Goatface Gaming, more whitewashing! Wait, what?